welcome. I'm glad you're here. And obviously, if you clicked on this, you want to hear my story of why I became a minimalist and what brought me to simple living and intentional living. And I want to start by saying this. It's vulnerable. It's incredibly honest, but I think it's essential to be sharing this because of how much I learn from experiences. I know that you can benefit from my experience and that's why I'm choosing to share it and I'm happy to share it. I'm also an open book, so if you have any questions or anything, just let me know down below. The clouds are going in and out today, so that's going to be interesting. Just, we're going to roll with it. I wanted to start by saying where I started. In probably around 2019, I was, what, 23 years old. I just had my first child. I was moving three times a year for my husband's job. I was an incredibly sick human being. I dealt with gut issues repeatedly and I kept getting the flu. I was just very sick, very frail. My hair was falling out. I was incredibly angry to a point where I felt as if I could not control my anger. I, I was just kind of like a volcano waiting to erupt. I didn't have an appetite. I thought I was being incredibly healthy, restricting all of the bad stuff, only eating the good stuff. I don't think there's another way to describe it other than I didn't have a lot of life in me. And I had my first child with my husband and that was what kind of sparked my, hmm, something's not right here because I can't even get off this couch and care for my child and you know, live with energy and bring him to a playground. I, have, I felt like I had nothing left. And that's, that's kind of the low point that it got to. And I had been doing the supplements, the healthy eating, the exercising, all of the things that I thought were going to heal me. I didn't even know what needed to be healed, but none of that was working. And so I felt incredibly stuck and very, very low. I'm not trying to trigger anyone or make anyone feel like they don't matter with what they're dealing with when I say these things, so I hope you know that. But uh, it wasn't until about halfway through 2019 where I stumbled across some articles on simple living. Actually, it was Haiga, I think is how you pronounce it. I could be totally wrong. But it's um, a Danish way of living, which is just super comfortable, slow living, a life full of ambiance and warm colors, warm tones, just to help people get through harsh winters. It was a really great article that I was reading and I was really intrigued. It just sounded really, really good. And I started diving into minimalism and simple living and decluttering and I decluttered everything and you can see it on my YouTube channel. I'm still decluttering, but I don't think that was my answer because I did that and I was still battling so much. But when I started to notice a difference in my life, in my joy, in my health, in the way I slept, in the way I walked around the house was when I finally looked at myself in the mirror and said, you are a discontent person. Growing up, I can't remember a time where I didn't feel like I was in a competition with somebody. I was always competing. And even at one point early in marriage when I was a new wife and a wife in the baseball industry trying to be the stereotypical baseball wife, there was a point when I would just spend, you know, two hours a day working out, two hours a day scrolling, getting inspiration on how to be like her and how to get what she has. And that was my life for a lot of years, unfortunately. But when I looked at myself in the mirror and said, you are discontent, that's when things started to change. So now I've explained my path down here. And now I'm going to explain my path back up. When I was down here, I looked at myself in the mirror, like I already said, I started meditating, but I was meditating more so on scripture and the verse that I can't give myself any of this credit, just so you know, this isn't look what I did. It's look what the Lord did. And uh, when I was here, the Lord put Psalm 23 in my mind. I have never really been someone to voluntarily memorize scripture, but here I was memorizing Psalm 23 which is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters and he restores my soul. And I meditated on that verse for what felt like two years. I just kept reading it over and writing it over and designing it over. But there was a form of safety, comfort, compassion, and strength 
that I found in that verse. Just knowing that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. That was so confronting to me because I've lived so much of my life up until this point wanting everything that I don't have and being so discontent. And now I get to go back up because I feel like I really have found freedom in defying what the culture and the world tells me to desire. Money, fame, security, a home, a good body, popularity, intelligence, all of these things I did not have. And I feel now that it was essential that those things were withheld from me. It was essential for me to go down to this low point. I didn't know that that's what I needed, but now that I'm here, I look back and say, hmm, Lord, you knew. You knew the whole time that if I received these things, I wouldn't have understood their value in my life, which really is down here. And the value that you are, Lord, is up here. And so uh, after that year of kind of just meditating, reorienting my life, reorienting my life, reprioritizing everything, I started going back up. I continued to declutter, but also I battle every single day the desire to invest in worldly things that are supposedly gonna make me happier. And you guys, it's a battle every single day, and I know if you clicked on this, you probably battle it often too. And when I put these things on my Instagram, and I ask how you guys are doing, almost every time you're like, oh, I'm struggling, I just, I'm discontent, I don't feel like I'm in the right place in my life. But what I learned is that that's exactly where we're supposed to be. When I looked at the mirror and said that stuff, I was in the basement of a host family's home with my one-year-old, and I was going on day like maybe 14 of not seeing my husband in a foreign city all by myself, thousands of miles away from family and friends. I literally felt like the Lord had stripped me of everything. And it was in that place, that really low place, that he met me there and said, here I am. And I have learned so much from that experience. So much so that if I were to ever forget that, I would kick myself. Um, so here I am, upwards, still fighting those battles every single day of desiring the worldly treasures, even today, like my birthday's coming up. I still have to fight these. And I'm not saying that like you can't buy things. I'm not saying that you have to have like an uber minimal home and you're not allowed to enjoy beauty and ya da 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 da. I'm not saying that. There are things I love to purchase and I love designing my home and I love putting makeup on and doing my hair. But there is a trap waiting for you and it's, it's different for everybody. Uh, there's a trap that tempts you to desire things over the Lord. And He is the one who deserves all of our attention, all of our energy, all of our praise. So I think it was more of my testimony there. <laughs> but maybe decluttering and minimalism, I say maybe, but I really think it is part of my testimony. Physically getting rid of stuff in my home, in my environment, in my life, in my mind, so that I could see more clearly. That was essential to who I am today. And who I am today, you guys can see on my YouTube channel, I'm all about peaceful living, intentional living, making your home beautiful, making time for the things that matter. And I'm happy. More than that, I, I have joy in my soul often. Life is different. Life is different. And I'm really, really grateful for everything that's happened, for everything that has not happened that I wanted to happen the things that I've received and the things that I haven't received. And I pray regularly that the Lord can continue to work through me and to strengthen me and to withhold things that are essential for my growth. Thanks for listening. I'm really glad you're here. And my desire is to help others feel this freedom and deep, deep joy with the one life that we have. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Don't talk about me that way I can't stand it Dress me